Hey, what's going on? It's Glennon Cameron, founder of Hustlers Kung Fu, the place that you come to learn how to start a business. Real information for real folks, stuff for beginners. Today, as you saw in the title, we're going to talk about how to make a million dollars a year using nothing but Craigslist. Now, first of all, this will not be easy. So let's remove the E word. Let's remove the hassle free. It will be hard. There will be hassle, but the money is on the table. So this is for the rugged, the brave, the folks who are ready to jump into that and make some money. All right, I'm gonna give you the steps, then I'm gonna give you exactly how I did it for my business because this works across various business models, various categories. This will work for a service business. This will work for a physical product business. So first thing you gotta do is pick a category. You will not be able to do this unless you have a team. If you got a team, you can get away with this. If you're just a one man shop in the beginning, pick one category and dominate it. I don't care if it's furniture. That was the category that I was in. I don't care if it's cars. I don't care if it's household items. I don't care if it's computers. You got to pick one and own it. All right. Your second step. So your second step. You may need space, which means you need to make an investment. If you're going to rent a space, get yourself an LLC, set yourself up properly, depending upon what you need. Also, if you need the proper licenses, if you're going to deal with cars, you can only sell so many before the state makes you register as a dealer. You can sell car parts. Uh, there's a salvage license. There's all kinds of stuff with that. Uh, the third thing, and really the most important, was create a marketing plan. And I'm going to go much deeper in that when I talk about what I was doing. Now, you got to make a decision here. Are you going to be a buyer or a seller? Many people want to be sellers, but they don't know how to buy. If you know how to buy really well, it helps you sell better. So you got to figure out what's your position. Are you a buying agent or you're a selling agent? What are you doing? And we'll get into the marketing thing. It's, it's not really complex. There's not a lot of moving parts, but you've got to execute. You got to execute. If you're not executing, I don't care how good the information that you get, it's not going to help you because without execution, um, None's going to work. All right. So we'll get into the marketing plan. And that's the big thing because I just kind of gave you the framework, you know, the framework. That's real simple. The real money is in the marketing plan. The marketing plan is everything. The marketing plan is it's going to make you or break you. Most people who sell on Craigslist or utilize Craigslist do not have a marketing plan. Never thought about it, nor have they learned how to write copies or do they even know how to take adequate pictures? Craigslist used to allow you to upload photos from photo bucket, which was crazy. Those photos were huge. They made a huge difference, but now you have to deal with what you have to deal with. But let me give you my experience on the marketing plan and what I went through to develop it. So let me go through the chat room. What's up, Yosef? What's up, Never Broke Action Pack? What's up, Broderick? What's up, Reginald? Nate the Alcoholic, what's up? What's up, Monica? What's up, Ken? What's up, Farrell? Mama needs her wine. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. For all of you who are new, be sure to go below the video and subscribe to the Hustlers Kung Fu live stream so you don't miss any live streams. That's the way that you'll know, get notified 30 minutes before. And also, if you're looking for additional content, go below the video and check out the other channels. Mac Daddy Media for you folks who are on that digital marketing tip. Rich self-published author for folks who want the writing, blogging stuff. And for people who are seasoned business owners. Be school for hustlers. And if you want the stories, I am Cameron. And then if you need some personal development, personal development for hustlers, just go below, get on all those lists and you will be blessed. What else do we have here? Um, thanks, Nate. What's up, Jacob? What's up, Ken? 
Let's see, there used to be HTML workarounds too, and I know that it changed a while back, so the way I used to do it no longer works. No, you can't put any HTML in. They've blocked that because anything that you used to be able to track your ad performance, they just took out. I mean, I think Craig, I wish Craigslist had sold to another company, someone that would want to, to try to make some money because I think the site is nowhere near as robust as it could be. But even with it being fucked up, you can still make a lot of money on it. A lot. Uh, yo, so selling on eBay as we speak, sure need to brush up on my buying skills. Buying, there's an old saying, you make your money when you buy, which means the price that you pay when you buy does not change. Market conditions can change. The price that you hope to sell it for could change. But the price that you bought it is carved in stone. So that's what that means. What's up, Lamote? Muscle and manhood. What's good? All right. So let's get into the most important part of making a million dollars on Craigslist. It is the marketing plan. This came after we had the eBay meltdown. And I had to do something because overnight, 68% of our income just evaporated disappear right so i sat at my desk every day we had inventory and i always overbought so if whatever the warehouse was packed there was anywhere from five to 20 units that needed to be unloaded and brought into the warehouse i was always pushing 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 so i just sat there and i started writing ads because i didn't have time to be upset and i didn't have time to rant rant and rave uh, i don't even think i was on facebook then and just sat down with the work and I started writing ads and I've noticed something because when you write 20 to 40 ads per day, you come across some feedback and short form ads, which are, I would say one to five paragraphs work really well on Craigslist and long form ads for certain things also work maybe 750 words to a thousand they also work just depends on what you're selling so i started playing around with it and this was this is called paca pisca whatever for any of you for those folks who are going to ask anyone that wants the storage auction information the craigslist information go below the video the links are there you can hook yourself up today and start working on that um i had a gmail account and it was this paca album and what I did is I went around the warehouse, took a bunch of pictures of stuff that I knew I could blow out, and I loaded it up to the garage sale section of Craigslist. And when people clicked on the link, boom, all of this stuff opened up. It was all of this stuff. And I had people who literally started saying, hey, I can't come out there, but if you can hold it or you know, if you take my credit card over the phone, I'll buy it now. So that opened up my eyes to the potential of Craigslist because that day, that was just, well, really a few days after the, the meltdown. I did like three grand on Craigslist. And a lot of those people I never met, they either paid through PayPal or they gave me their credit card. Now we were already set up with this. We had a merchant account. We had the ability to take credit cards over phone. So those, that was not something we had to go out and do. And I was like, wow. And then I started writing more ads and more ads to the point that I developed a signature and some haters. Um, it's one of the stories on the channel, like the chick that wouldn't go away where I actually had and Craigslist had the erotica section where I posted her information. Don't do that. That's illegal. Now that's illegal. Now don't do that. But she wouldn't get off me. So I got her number and email address and I just put in the ad and she got blew up overnight. Never heard from her again. Um, kept posting and then I, I reached a threshold and this is one of the important things about doing your own work. When I got to 100 ads a day, the income became predictable. Under 100 ads, it was hit or miss, but there'll be good days or bad days. But when I consistently posted 100 ads, and this was before they had the accounts and all this other stuff, and this is when you would go on Craigslist, you would post your ad, and then Craigslist would send you an email, right? So I would like, look, look, when I had like 100, I just start clicking and setting all of the ads off. 
And what will happen is, since we were selling furniture, we would dominate a section of Craigslist for three to four hours. And the sales would just like go. You could still do this. It's just, um, you got to do it a little differently now. And I actually explained the whole process. But through pictures, learning how to write copy, finding out the numbers for what we were selling, which was over 100 ads per day, every day, or you know, at least five days a week, we got to the point of doing three, four, five, six, seven thousand dollars a day on Craigslist. And then when the eBay thing came back, we still went hard with eBay, but I never let Craigslist go. That's why I wrote Pimping Craigslist for Fun and Profit. That's why I know that you still make a lot of money with Craigslist. You just can't do it as easily as you could 2002, three, four, five, six, seven. A lot of people back then, it was just technical people. It was uh, programmers. It was really funny. Craigslist was a really good outlet to sell stuff. And many people with high incomes who were in technical fields knew about it. It was pretty, pretty cool. All right. Before I go on, I'm going to see what else is in here. Let's see. All right. Just making sure I'm keeping up because, you know, these chats are a little different. Uh, yeah, Ken, it could. There's so much more it could be. But, you know, uh, Craigslist has, I believe, 38 employees and makes like 50 million a year. And they make all they make all of their money off of, you know, ads. Whenever I post an ad on Craigslist to hire someone, I have to pay 35 bucks, New York, 45 bucks. I'm quite sure it's 45, 50 bucks in California. But one of the things that many people don't do is they don't really push it. They, you, you will not be successful posting one or two ads a day. If you're on Craigslist now, if you're posting one or two ads a day, you need to be posting 30 to 50 ads a day. And if you're posting 10 ads a day, you need to be posting 80 to 100 every day. Now, how do you accomplish this? Because Craigslist will limit you. If you're in certain categories, you can only post five ads per Craigslist account. So let's do the math on this. If you want to post 50 ads a day and you know you're going to be limited by five ads per category, then you need 10 accounts. Math's pretty simple. And what you'll need is now, a lot of the stuff is, is funny. You can use Google Voice to voice confirm a Craigslist ad now because, you know, just a little background about me. I probably have 35, 40 Gmail accounts, probably the same number of Google Voice numbers. And I just kept that stuff up. I never let it go because every time I would get an email like, hey, you know, we're getting ready to get rid of your Google Voice number, I just go in there and just text myself for something to keep it active. So a lot of these older numbers are will allow you to, you know, verify stuff. It was really interesting. So you're going to need 10 counts if you want to, you know, or 20. If you want to do 100 ads a day, you're going to need 20 accounts. And you're going to need 20 email addresses. And you're going to need 20 phone numbers. That's what you're going to have to have if you are going to develop this robust marketing plan. Because Craigslist is probably in the top 50 websites in the world. It used to be in the top 10. I don't know if it's in the top 10 anymore. So there's still a ton of traffic coming in there. And this is where your marketing plan comes to, to play. You need to learn how to copyright. Now, I use Craigslist extensively for furniture, um, vacuums, any you know, physical stuff, physical products, big bulky stuff down to moderately bulky stuff. And so the copy on that really didn't have to be that hard. Then when we'll fast forward to when I wasn't reselling anymore and I started doing this internet marketer thing, YouTube. I started writing erotica and I used Craigslist to test a lot of copy because if I got a great deal of responses from that written piece, and this is what I mean when I say you can write 750, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 word long Craigslist post and they will convert. But if you don't do this and you don't do your own testing, you don't know this. And I used those accounts and I used the same marketing plan that I used for furniture 
for the writing samples and if writing samples hit then i will take those writing samples and turn them into a book and put it on kindle and the books that hit really well on craigslist did really well on kindle and there was a few books that i really liked but you know the feedback they were just like eh and i put them on kindle and it was like eh <laughs> so i learned i mean it, it it's just the reality if a large block of people like something then you can put it to a larger block of people and more than likely you're going to get the same results. Let's see what's going up. Thanks, Diana. Muscle and manhood. Yes, I found that Craigslist buyers are, begin are beginning to be very savvy. You need captivating copy, clean photos. I sell vintage and antiques exclusively. I sold uh, first dibs level stuff on Craigslist. Cool. Made some good money. Clothing sucks on Craigslist unless you're a fence. <laughs> Marcavelli, what do you mean by copy? Copy is writing, is essentially creating words that persuade people to buy. That's copy. Uh, let's see, Muscle Man, you know, authentic Gucci or Hermes belts, but don't go there trying to sell a DKNY belt or suit or Hummel figures unless they're rare. So, yeah, I mean, now here's something now, I'm gonna say I was able to sell certain brands and certain things of clothing on Craigslist. Now we had this eBay process and we had the photo booth, we had mannequins for clothing because we had one eBay clothing ID that was 100% clothing. And if you have nice stuff, and I'm gonna tell you what will sell clothing wise well on Craigslist. And it's the same thing on eBay, big girl clothes, 2X, 3X, really nice fashionable stuff flies it just flies because women who are larger have a hard time finding fly shit so if you got some fly stuff it can sell anywhere if you present it right uh broderick how would you know they liked it when you put the erotica on craigslist would they email you back then before craigslist became you know the way they are now you could put a photo bucket picture up or there was this company that was and it gave you this HTM, html that you can put into the craigslist ad and i would look at the traffic uh, like with the pictures you can't do this anymore but i explain it i would take a photo bucket picture and i paid for the enhanced photo bucket service so based upon the number of clicks on that picture I could tell if my copy was good or not. Let's say I put up an ad and the picture got 600 clicks and nobody emailed me. Something's wrong. Either the pricing was wrong, the copy was wrong, something was wrong. So based upon that feedback, I could adjust and revise the ad and make the sale. Now with the erotica, it was based on responses. It was based upon hits and sometimes you could actually see that people would come back so that was a good sign here's a missile man if you have a vintage chesterfield leather sofa you could sell it for premium right now just about anywhere in the u.s um you could sell that you can sell herman wakefield you can sell um god what is the it's not herman wakefield it's wakefield it's, what is it Herman Miller, Wakefield something, it's another name, and there was another one, Mid-Century Furniture, and just about anything Herman Miller vintage, if you know what you have. A lot of people will have, like take a Herman Miller eggshell chair. A lot of people just think it's a piece of old junk. Those suckers, if they're in good condition, I'm guessing, because I haven't sold one in a while, but beat up, I used to get 200 bucks for them because people would refurbish them. So there's no telling what they're getting now because they don't make these chairs anymore. What's in the world, that's it. <laughs> uh, place an ad on Craigslist, go to Craigslist, set up an account. That is super easy. Yeah, Glenn, 100% correct. Big mama, full feminine women clothing is a solid niche. Dude, I found this unit and this girl was from Chicago. She was from the pictures, I'm gonna say 250. Uh, 
but she had an amazing sense of fashion and she had a lot of clothes back then. I don't know what the shoe size now, but the sweet spot for women's shoe sizes was eight and a half, eight to nine, eight to eight to nine, nine and a half. She had these, these boots, she had these coats, that stuff just, it flew out. I mean, it was just moving. It was ridiculous how fast that stuff. Uh, I'm going to talk, Mr. Say, I'm going to talk about a lot of different stuff. This is, you ain't been around in a while, but what Hustlers Kung Fu is, just for you know, folks who are coming, we're just going to, this stuff's going to be for beginning hustlers, this channel. If you want the most, more seasoned stuff, you already have a business, you're looking for extra tips, then you want to go to B School for Hustlers. The link's below. Uh, Reminds me of the day when you and that redneck picker were the only game in town for YouTube fun towns. Yeah, before all the fuckery began, and everybody wanted to be a reselling star. Because back then, there was redneck picker who just completely left his channel. Uh, Terminal 99. There was Dan Dotson from Storage Wars. He had a channel before I did. He was doing Storage Wars, storage auctions on YouTube. You can check it out. It's still up. And a lot of people just don't understand how this whole game changed but i'm going to be talking about a lot of different beginning hustlers um tomorrow may be uber you know i drove for uber for six weeks to write the book and just i've been talking to some uber drivers because it, it's changed because i take uber and i've noticed that here in atlanta price has gone up i don't know if it's gone down i haven't taken uber in a few weeks but it's gone up so there's gonna be a lot of stuff we'll talk about no no, that's what I, that's what, thank you. What, Herman, what is it? Wakefield, it's Wakefield something else. And there's another one, No, and there's another one besides that. And this is all, if you ever watch a movie from the 50s or 60s, you see this stuff everywhere because that's what it is. I mean, it's real wood, it's built super sturdy, and it's something you can refinish, repair, remake. Dante out here hustling, hustle on, hustle on. Legend 89, like the advice, always working, good deal. David, you could repost some, something, someone else, let's see. You could repost someone else's ad to the ballpark, the visibility when tracking data before it gets pulled down to access to the man too. I had people steal my ass, David. So yeah, you, you're right about that. What's up, Shrumanati? <laughs> Mike Z, I sell used cars on Craigslist. Would you recommend anything different for cars? All right, we're gonna take Mike Z. This is where most people go wrong with selling cars. They don't watch the fucking car. This is what you do. You take your car and you go not to some commercial place to take your picture. If you don't have a nice house, you find a house for sale in a really nice neighborhood. You wash that car. And it's only going to take you like four minutes. Even if the police come until you leave, you're just like, hey, I was just taking pictures. And boom, jet. Take a picture of that car in the driveway. Make sure it's washed. Make sure the wheels have armor all. And take really good pictures of the front, the back, the side, close-ups of any damage. And make sure you do this when the sun is out so you have the best light possible. And it's just going to make such a difference in the number of hits you get on your ass. So do that if you're not already doing it. Also, write a little story about the car. I mean, make some up like, hey, this was my grandmother's car. I had a car out of a storage unit. It was a 19, what was it? It's an Impala. It was a Mustang. I just wrote it was grandma's car. It was, you know, it's been in storage for years, which wasn't a lie. And just read this little story about it. And the guy was just like, ah, I'll take her off your hands. He, he almost had a tear in his eye. So, you know, put a little bit more effort into it. Jose Soto, sure thing. Haywood Wakefield, that's it. It's been a long time since I've done that. Appreciate it, Mr. Setti. Uh, Stickly Furniture sells well. I sold a Stofa in Wester, Westchester, New York to a guy from Philly who drove 100 miles to pick it up. If you can get vintage furniture in great shape 
that can be rehanced, re-sanded, re-stained. Uh, sometimes people will buy these vintage pieces just for the frame and they know they're gonna have to redo the covers and cushions. Uh, is really reselling a good idea to start with or no? Here's the thing. Any business that you wanna start is a good business to start. Everything works if you know how to execute. Some things work better than others, some things work quicker. Uh, it really depends upon your resources, what you're good at, what you're bad at, how much money you have. There's a lot of variables. But here's the thing with reselling, and this is what gets a lot of people stuck. <clears throat> and I was having this conversation with someone the other day. You go ahead and become really good with eBay, right? And you become really good with Amazon, or you become really good with Craigslist. I think if you become really good with Craigslist, that's probably the least harmful because it is a third party platform. They make the rules and they can change them on you at any time. But with Craigslist, you can develop a customer set, a list because I'm going to tell you some stuff that I used to do because the statute of limitations are up. Yes, this shit was illegal, but I don't care. I'll tell it to you. And it's a great place reselling like the video that I put up the other day. Someone just saying, hey, isn't this hip hypocritical? I never said eBay was not a good place to start. My whole thing is it's the worst place to end up because they're going to change the rules on you. And what happens is, and there's this phrase, luxuries once tasted become necessities. So you're used to eBay or you're used to Amazon and you have to build your own website and it's going to be slow. You're going to be freaking out because you got addicted to that velocity and then the minute they take it away from you you're like you out there you know doing whatever you got to do to get back in and you're not using your brain power to build something else uh legend 89 great advice detail in the car can raise the value a couple thousands i mean it i used to clean up furniture and i saw the difference i used to i used to clean up the washer and dryers you know when you get a washer out of a unit and there's like uh built up soap residue and stuff i would clean all that out and then take my little air pressure thing and blow the sucker out and make it really clean and shine it up it's just you feel more confident buying something that's clean you just do uh demetri jackson hey glennon what do you think of prime america um i'm not even gonna talk about that because one of the things is i don't have any experience with prime america i don't know Oh, it's, it's the detail in it. I've seen, you know, I've bought cars and sold cars on Craigslist. I've seen people sell cars that's right over an oil spot. And you're going, oh, it's, it may not even be leaking. I've seen people take fuzzy pictures of a high-end car. It's so many things you can do that can just up your game. Mike Z, with advertising services such as household moving, work the same way as to ask for products. Okay. Yes, because every, every day someone is looking for moving services. Every day someone's looking for moving services. Every day someone's looking for painting services. Uh, I had my office, you know, if you go, you can actually see the video. It's on here. I found that guy on Craigslist and we got some other stuff that's coming in and I'm gonna call him up today and maybe because I'm gonna need the whiteboard thing painted. So that the straight off Craigslist. Here's the thing. Craigslist is a rolling posting system, right? Every day someone's posting something else. If you're in the service business, you got some people posting, but if you have a marketing plan and you're posting 20, 30, 40, 50 ads a day, you're gonna catch that person who's looking because you know, when do you need some painted? When do you need your car fixed? When, that's just stuff that just happens, but there's so many people that it frequently happens and you need to always have your hat in the ring you always need to be advertising always even when you don't feel like it there were days that i had to do my ads and i was like i don't want to do this stuff and then i remember when i got slack what happened the sales got slack you're and it works through the law of averages let's say you're posting five days a week and you'll just post consistently and you'll have four days where shit ain't happening and then boom, that fifth day, and then the next next week, 
every day it's going. Then your next week is half the days, but you consistently have to post to be able to capture that traffic. You got to do some research on that, Shrumanati. Let's see. Spot on with eBay or any other site uh, in additions. I'm already transitioning into consignment and style ground. There's Men Clothing app for my eBay. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Mr. Sadie, reselling is a great business, basic business learning experience. I mean, essentially, reselling, if you get into it hard, will teach you how to sell, which is an invaluable skill. Is there still a way to test book? Yes, you can. It just depends on the topic. Uh, okay, I'll get to that legal thing. Reclaim Wood is a very hot market, Izzy Taurus. I mean, people are building. There's this place that I was doing, like a co worker space called Rome. All of the wood on the wall was reclaimed, every last bit of wood in there. So it is huge. Uh, let's see. Makeover Fitness LLC. I do online fitness coaching. Do you find it difficult at first to sell a service that depends on the customers taking action? It's not a quick fix. And actually requires you to work out and eat right. Um, it's always a challenge when you're selling online and you don't have that physical connection. You got to, if you're going to make it in fitness online, you got to get, you got you got to be posting all over the place. You got to be on Instagram with your six packs. You have to be a walking billboard for your business. And if you're handsome or beautiful, that really helps. But you, you got to bring that up front. You and also talking about taking action and telling people the truth. That's going to save you a lot of headaches where you don't get a lot of yard bird customers. Uh, Blackbird Mark 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 seven. <laughs> How many Craigslist accounts did you work? I had. Well, I was able to post 20 things back then. So I had five to seven. But now they will limit you at five on certain things. Clint, how do you use C Craigslist for real estate leads? Use the marketing system that I put out. Ken, I've seen a bunch of reclaimed wood on uh, un, upcycle projects and listed the well for absurd prices. I do a lot of handmade stuff, furniture, upcycles, not your typical stay at home mom blog type shit. <laughs> well, Ken, if you're doing that kind of stuff, if you had a blog talking about reclaimed wood, that's a hot market. Uh, Mr. Sadie, I think many people overthink the next big ideal and overlook the simple basic things people really need, like transportation, lawn care, basic maintenance with help so many opportunities. There's a ton of opportunities. We're having a, a we're having a big service you know economy, and I'll talk about service businesses in more depth. So every time I see a generic bench made from reclaimed wood for 200 bucks, it blows my mind. And I wish I could track their post. <laughs> you got to understand. And here's the thing about pricing. And I'll tell the illegal thing in a minute. Pricing is elastic. There's X amount of people who will pay a price. There, there's a guy on this planet that if I found him and I walked up in this camera, right? And I said, hey, this camera. I want to sell it to you for ten thousand dollars. It's going to change your life. And there's a person who's like, okay. Is that most people? Nope. Half the people? No. That's very, very rare. So with your pricing, you got to figure out where you could price your stuff somewhere in the middle or toward the top end of the middle, so you can have a lot of sales. But it's very elastic. So when you see something really expensive. You should ask yourself this question, and this is something that I'm going to put into personal development for hustlers. Hmm. It is a great thing that someone can sell that piece of wood that they found on the ground for 200 bucks. Because one of the things that will kill you is if you hate on something, subconsciously, you can't have it. You, you'll tell yourself on your, your conscious mind, okay, I'm going to sell this for 150, but 
there are many people who shoot themselves in the foot. Uh, you know, I've been attacked for you know charging money for information, creating courses and stuff. And everyone who has really come after me hard, you look, uh, you, you lift up their skirts, and you see they want to do the same thing, and they've been very unsuccessful. Part of their the reason for them not being successful is they have not set the right intentions in their mind. So they're hating on me for doing the thing that they want to do. So what they're doing is pushing what they want further and further and further away. Because their subconscious mind is not going to allow them to do the right things, make the right decisions, execute the correct way to get what they hate. So you got to be real careful with that. So don't be looking at it like, that's ridiculous. You should be like, that's great. I can sell, well, shit. If they sold it for 200, I could sell my reclaimed wood for 250. You got to talk to yourself like that. Uh, is there big money in reselling books on Amazon? I don't know. Uh, I have seen some things to make me believe that's very challenging right now, but I don't know because Amazon ended the long term. I mean, you got a long term storage fee now that's pretty robust. So, you got to factor that in. I mean, people were able to send hundreds of books to Amazon for free and not have to pay storage fees. That is no longer the case. So I really don't know. Sure thing. Okay. What's up, Vance? All right. Here is the illegal stuff. I used to sell a ton of guns on Craigslist. A ton of guns. Now, back in my storage auction days before the shows, if I would get anywhere from zero to 20 guns a month. Sometimes I would get five, six, seven, or 10 in one unit. Now, I would do things like this. I would have my photo area, right? And I would say, I am selling this holster. And in the photo would be the guns, but I would not have gun in the title. I would not have gun in the copy. I would just have the gun in the photo. And when someone would say, hey, is that gun for sale? Well, you know what? It wasn't when I posted it. But you know what? Today it is. <laughs> I sold so many guns that way. You're not supposed to sell guns on Craigslist. But see, I didn't really sell guns on Craigslist. I presented a gun and allowed the people who were looking at something else to make that decision. I did the same shit on eBay. I would put pictures of, you know, complimentary items in the listing. You have to be careful because if you put a picture there and whether you have it in the listing on eBay, people still think that's part of the auction, right? Because it's in that picture. So you have to be real careful. But Craigslist, oh yeah, I remember I had these Air Jordans, retro Air Jordans, brand new, still in the box. And I took a picture of the Jordans and I put a 357 next to the box. Nobody gave a shit about those Jordans. Everybody was like, how much for the 357? Because it was um, it was either the Coat Python, it was the Dirty Harry gun, because I always get those confused, but that was the one. And the thing is, the gun was looks badass, but from shooting standpoint, the way they designed it, that sucker would spit lead out the side sometimes, which really is not good because if you got people next to you, they get a little, they get a little, they get singed. But that's what I did. I did that for years. I sold so many. Now, once again, let's talk about this. Uh, I live in the state of Georgia. It is legal for one individual in the state of Georgia to sell another gun to another individual in Georgia. You can't do that shit in New York. Uh, I, don't, I don't know the gun laws in New York. I just know that they are probably the worst in the nation right up there with California. But shotgun, 22 bullets the stuff i would just put in the picture next to let's say if i wanted to sell guns i would do sporting goods i would like sell baseball bats like hey these baseball bats are for sale for like 10 bucks and have the gun in the picture never got reported everyone says how much for the gun are you selling the guns so that was the illegal thing it was craigslist illegal it wasn't breaking the law illegal Let's see what we got here. Uh, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> what was this? It's a stupid little text. Now you're teaching, bro. I explained this to a group of artists. I told them, 
They aren't willing to buy painting for a thousand, but why in the fuck would anyone want to buy theirs? I mean, it is like I was in this group and this guy wanted someone to sell his $50,000 course, right? And I was like, well, do this, buy the $50,000 course and reverse engineer how they sold it to you. They didn't like that response. I go to events, I spend money for training. Now, as a consequence, I can make a lot of money selling stuff because I believe in paid training. I don't hate on paid training. I don't go after Ty Lopez. I don't go after anybody that's legitimately selling something that works. I'll say some about some people who are trying to sell a product and they have no experience whatsoever in their shows, but I believe in paid training. I'm going to drop because uh, everybody's going to this thing in October and the tickets are going to be 600 bucks per person. So that's going to probably be four to five people. So that's, let's just say 3000 on tickets. Let's say another 5,000 on airline tickets. So we're at eight hotel. That's probably going to be 12 G's for paid training. That's what I believe in. But, you know, all these folks who hate on this stuff, they can't have it. And they don't understand that they're shooting themselves in the foot by their own belief system. Legend 89. I always urge people to take good care of their belongings the moment they purchase them because it's easy to resell an old item for good price that's still in good condition. Legend 89, 100% true. 100% true. Um, I had this yard bird, but I don't know if I have it here, but I was selling the Apple Watch. I still have the packaging. I still have all the instructions. I got an extra band. People were bidding like crazy. I just had one person who overbid, didn't want to pay what they bid. Uh, never broke action pack. Book selling on Amazon is slow. G's right about the storage fees. I re I heard about that. Uh, Muslim manhood to charge top tier, you got to see the value of top tier and meet the exact same standard, exceed them, add even more value. True. Legend 89. I always urge people to take good care of their belong. Oh, I already read that. Uh, thanks for that. I agree. That's Ken. Uh, Kim Williams, thanks for that. I agree in mindset perspective. I look truly can change your productive, productive, productivity and energy. Yes. Uh, let's see, David. Amazon still has a book buyback program for immediate credit, which can be converted into gift cards, cryptocurrency, or whatever. Okay. That's from David. Dimitri, women are selling massages on Craigslist. They're not selling sex. He understands. He understands. And uh, Diana Thompson. Uber driver beat the ambulance and pickup, and he was seven miles further away. Yet did not, yep, did not wait. Damn, that sounds serious. Uh, never broke action pack. If anyone needs a good graphic design website to help with their service business, contact me. <laughs> uh, Kimmy, what's up with the thumbs down? I got people who, as soon as the video comes out, they thumbs down. But here's the thing. Thumbs down, thumbs up, do not count in the YouTube algorithm because they can both can be gamed. The Hectress, in New York City, if you find a gun in the storage unit, call the cops. If you remove it intentionally, you can get automatically get three years in the state. Damn, that's crazy. Zim, the raconteur. is slim the storyteller. Glenn had this guy try to talk me out of commercial real estates. <laughs> uh, Matthew Campbell, I learned about re that reverse engineering from the book.com secrets. Mike Z, would you recommend to accept credit cards through Square or some other gateway? Yes. Okay, here's the thing. When I had my warehouse, this girl came in and I signed up for the service and she said these words, by accepting credit cards, you will improve your sales 50 to 100%. And she was 100% spot on, as they, the British people say. Credit cards are going to increase your sales. Take Square, get yourself a merchant account, whatever you want to do. Yes, they will. Oh, no problem. Definitely accept credit cards. Definitely. I talk about it in a lot of old storage auction business videos. 
I took credit cards. This is something else I did on Craigslist. I would post furniture that I did not have in stock, but I knew I can get it the same day, right? And I would post a bunch of those ads and someone would call and then I would go to my distributor, pick up the furniture, take it to their house. A lot of people, I said, you can pay my credit card or cash when I get there. I never had anyone stiff me or anything, but the furniture, I took really good pictures. And when I got there, the furniture looked exactly like it did in the picture. Uh, would you recommend using Craigslist to redirect a funnel to a square store? You got to understand the psychology of the people on each platform. Right now, there's a big buying community on Facebook, but they have a different personality than the buying community on Craigslist. And then Craigslist has a different uh, personality than the folks buying on eBay. But the people on Craigslist and eBay are very, very similar. So if you're going to send people to a naked website, you're going to have to have an offer. And that's something I'll talk about on B-School for Business. Your offer is going to be really, really big on getting that rolling. So it really, once again, depends on your category because I'm going to list them really quick. Pick a category. Find space because it, your infrastructure is going to determine your income. You got a small infrastructure, your income is going to be small. That's just how it is. Get whatever licenses you need. You know, if you want to sell cars, go ahead and get your dealer's license, savage license, reseller license, whatever. Get a business license, get an LLC. Because, you know, you the amount of money that you can make on Craigslist is sick if you have a proper marketing plan. That was one of the reasons I was still selling a lot of stuff pretty much up to 2013. At one point, I was specializing in Max and another thing because it was just easy money. I mean, I had automated the system and every week I would get X amount of deals. It just wasn't that hard of a thing. OK, I'm going to go deeper into the buyer or seller. Now, what I mean about being a buyer or seller, I bought to sell, which means I had to really, really make sure that I bought correctly. If I bought poorly, it was going to impact my profit greatly. Now, if you're a seller, that's where you're getting wholesale stuff or you got other things from like storage auctions or maybe you're buying on Craigslist and selling on Craigslist. Once again, most people do a shitty job of selling on Craigslist. So you can buy something from Craigslist, follow the steps of this video, turn around and sell it on Craigslist for more. Happens all the time. Uh, Matthew Campbell, why are some stores against taking credit cards? I hate the cash on. They don't want to pay taxes, man. You don't take credit cards. It's not tracked. It's, it's, that's, that's what that's about. Also, I use eBay and Amazon right now. I'm making money. I use them to sell some storage unit items. Also use them as learning tools. And that is something I don't necessarily want to be doing in two years. Okay. What is this? Brent. Uh, I live in an area that has a population of 60,000. Can I work with that? Yes. Uh, Kim Williams, any suggestions to cover your ass, the taxes on giving receipts, bookkeeping and everything? Um, here's my thing with this, because everyone wants to talk about taxes. Everyone's tax situation is different. There is no, quote, general advice. If you put the money in the bank, you need to claim it. That's all I got to say on that. And oh yeah, get yourself a CPA. You get a CPA, someone you can pay who can speak and look at your situation because it, you got more going on than just this. Uh, Angie's List is a totally different thing. Angie's List is a vetting system. Craigslist is just a marketplace. It's, they're not even the same. <laughs> yeah, I know about that, Izzy. It was funny. All right, so that's how you can make a million dollars. You got to scale. You got to buy. You got to list. 
you you got to be out there. And I'll get into a few more st- tips before I leave. You have to treat it like a business from day one. You can't go in there and uh, I'm just flipping some stuff. You have a schedule or, you know, you just answer the phone whenever if someone's offering you a deal or someone's trying to buy something at 10 o'clock. You may not want to meet them at 10 o'clock, but just like, hey, I'm here. Yes, it's available. What time can we meet tomorrow so you can set that deal up to be closed? I had like 8,000. I stopped counting. It could be more. So many transactions that I got to the point when as soon as someone walked in, I knew if they were going to buy or not. And it, it really depends upon your marketing. Most people who sell on Craigslist are casual sellers. They got clean out the garage, moving. They're just trying to get rid of some stuff. As a professional seller, you got to have a whole, whole different ball game. It's a full-time deal. The, like I said, the money that can be made is sick. So that's the thing. All right. So with that, stay tuned. There will be more live streams talking about various things. Um, we'll be talking about Uber. We'll be talking about some other hustles. There's Uber Eats. There, there's so many new things I haven't talked about because it kind of went straight away from that. And this channel is, once again, for beginners. If you're a beginning hustler, maybe intermediate, and you want to dip your toe into the hustler's waters, this is the place for you. We'll talk about a lot of different hustles, a lot of tactics, a lot of ways for you to approach stuff. And if you need more, go below, check out the other channels, subscribe. And there's a list of products below that may help you in your situation hustle harder and faster. And they will always cost you less than the money you will make by using them. All right. So with that, I will catch you guys tomorrow. Don't know what time because I got a lot of stuff going on, but there will be live streams every day. All right. Hold on a second. I'm trying to do something. I'm not really here, but uh, we got this troll. I blocked him on the main channel. And let's see, for him to show up, that's all about. All right, we got rid of that, that foolishness. This is what I'm talking about when party. This guy, he came in like last week. The only way that he knows that this video is live is because he subscribed to the channel. Now, why would you be subscribed to something you can't hate? And, you know, we got so much going on. I'm not going to uh, get into the roasting, but uh, I am. He'll have to create another ID 
to there we go come to the channel so once again all right now we got that handled because one of the things i'm doing this is i've seen what happened with these trolls and what they do is alienate people they piss people off because their lives are fucking sad they're impotent they're broke and we're not going to have that here you know i used to do battle with them get rid of them block them i've had several channels deleted so that's what we're going to do so once again thanks for everybody that came here thanks for the folks who jumped on the troll because you know we're because essentially a lot of them just want attention because their mother didn't hug them enough uh, maybe their mom didn't want them and neither did their dad who knows but these are some lonely people all right so with that be sure to go below the video subscribe to the additional channels be sure to get on the hustlers kung fu live email because there's a lot of live stuff that's going to go down on not only this channel but the other channels and you're not going to miss it so with that i'm gone for real now